you happen to read my paper, I have quoted statistics to the regions of billions, billions of US dollars that are lost in corporations and companies because workers and employees spend most of their time on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. So it's a serious issue. What you do on a social network is no longer none of everybody's business. It's our business. It's the employer's business. There is a principle which is there. The principle is the principle of non-repudiation. There is no way you can... Non-repudiation is, is, is a big word which means uh, small things. There is no way I can deny what has been put on my Facebook profile to say it's not me. If an email comes from my account to you saying something, there is no way I can refuse. So that principle of non-repudiation is a serious principle. Right, let me give another uh, example. Another guy was playing a game. I talked of third party applications as one of the variables. One guy was playing a game on Facebook. I know most of you know the game. It's called, show who has a crush on me. And he says, click here. This young man had been newly hired at a big company. Uh, fortunately, the, the, or unfortunately, or fortunately, the chief executive officer was late. Maybe a, an environment I go to university, we have uh, a Sheila right there at the top. That was more or less a similar environment. This guy was clicking. Apparently, this organization had the principle of digitally profiling. They would check your Facebook profile, check your Twitter to see how your behavior is like. So when, when this guy played this game, right, it found it scanned because it uses an algorithm which checks all the people on the, on the, who are your friends and who are not your partners like spouses and then it flags out the one who has the highest clicks to your profile. So when the highest click was mined by this algorithm, it found that the chief executive officer, who happened to be a lady, is the one who had a crush on this young man. And it was flighted on everybody's profile. You know how Facebook does it? It pops onto my profile and everybody else's profile, everybody is your friend. And this young man had 1,000 friends. Imagine, you know the verdict. What happened? Fired. So it's a serious issue. The other thing this paper is going to fight for is what is called netiquette. Proper user behavior on a social network is one of the determinants of employability, whether you retain your job or we can recruit you. Netiquette. Normally we talk of etiquette in terms of how do you dress, how do you speak, how do you do things, how do you conduct yourself, but we are talking of netiquette. What is the name of your profile? What is the background picture of your account on a, face, on, on a social network? Imagine you're applying for a job and you're... I read one of the stories. One guy was applying for a job and their email address was sexcombatant at yahoo.com. <laughs> Would you hire such a person? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> social networking service. So this paper is going to look at social network. How can we transform our social networks those people we have as peers and friends on a social network, how can we transfer those connections into professional networking? That is basically the premise of this particular paper. I'm going to jump a lot of things. Uh, I'm not going to finish this paper. I'm just going to quit. That's basically what I'm going to do. I cannot finish it, actually. I'm just going to quit. What are the research questions that this paper attempts to answer, or this research? What does it attempt to answer? Number one, the social network user behavior affect the employability of graduates. Number two, to what extent, remember I said this is a proposal. This research has not been done, okay? It's a proposal for a research. To what extent does social network user behavior affect positive appraisal? I'm happy that Jaya is here. Imagine you're doing a, 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 an employee appraisal and you're using their social network user behavior. How many would qualify to have a positive appraisal? and therefore job retention, to what extent can social network user behavior determine the transformation from social networking to professional networking? Those are the research questions that this paper attempts to answer. What would be the methodologies? Let's talk about the methodologies. Basically, this research is going to use cluster sampling 
a structured survey questionnaire, five percent of college graduate sample space. We can choose any college or talk of all the tertiary institutions in Botswana and use them. Just five percent of the students, five percent of the employers and employment agencies in Haboroni. And for data analysis, SPSS can actually be used for purposes of data analysis. If you want to have further understanding, further analysis on this, you can read the paper. Okay, what are the hypotheses that are driving this particular paper? What are the hypotheses that are driving this particular paper? Number one, employability can be determined by candidate's social network user behavior. So this research will aim to prove or disprove this particular hypothesis. Is it really true that what we do can never be a From the little and a few examples I've given you, I'm sure you have a foretaste of what we are talking about. Number two, social, uh, social network user behavior affects the positive appraisal of a current employee, therefore their job retention. Hypothesis number three, SNS user behavior significantly affects the transformation of social networks into professional networks. Imagine, can someone connect with you professionally if they always see you posting pornographic features and pictures on your profile? Definitely not. It doesn't matter how people are educated, our pedigree in terms of money or whatever. All of us, at the basic level, we connect at a social level. We had a dinner yesterday, and I was just laughing during the dinner. Someone would have thought, it's a networking dinner, so it means we are all going to be given desk. I'll sit there with the Dr. May, and I'll be asking her, so who are you talking talk to me in a very formalized environment? No, it wasn't like that. There were no desks, there was nothing. It was a social event, people were eating. Because humans, by nature and by definition, we connect at a social level. And if we fail to harness the power of the social networks, to look at it in terms of employability, job retention, then we are going, uh, we are riding on a sloppy, we are taking a sloppy ride. So these are the three hypotheses I'm moving. Right, what are my expected findings? In the event that this research is actually done, what would be the expected findings? A number of users assume their social network user behavior is nobody's business and should be left alone. Some of you have already confirmed that, that suspicion. Third-party applications on social network services increase user risk and behavior. By third-party applications, I'm talking about certain programs like the one I told you, find who has a crush on me. It's a third-party application. And in most, most cases, for you to, 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 to play that, uh, that game or whatever they are providing, you need to give exclusive access to your account, to everything on your profile, to that particular application. What happens thereafter is at the mercy of the game owner. So that is how some of the information end up uh, flighted on social networks. Majority of users depend on default security settings of the social networking application. How many of us have ever configured, looked at your social network profile and tried to configure it and try to include some bit of security? We are saying most of us, we don't care. We just believe whatever Facebook is giving us is more than enough. And let me tell you whether you know it or you don't, whether it's, a, it's done in a disciplined way or undisciplined way, digital profiling is done. Employers, they look at your profile. They do judge you, and it can determine whether you get a job or you don't. Now, I know some of you are saying, there are lots of variables, Brighton. Why are you not talking about the curriculum change? Why are you not talking about... Uh, I mean, all those big terms that we were taught, they are very significant and very important. But what I'm trying to present here is a small ant that broke the camel's back. Small issues, but they have a bearing. Now, user behavior is very important, antecedent of employability and job retention. Minimum levels of transformation from social networking to professional networking. This is one thing I'm trying, I'm expecting to find. Having done this research, that there are very few people, candidates, graduates, who are transforming most of their friends on a social network to possible professional partners or networking partners. Right, what is the recommendations of this research? I'm not going to look at the theory, the philosophy, and the principles. I'm just going to rush straight into the possible recommendations. Having done this research, what are the recommendations that we find? Number one, 
I'm recommending, after this research is done and is conclusive, there should be a recruitment model that can be developed for HR managers, employment agencies, that is based on digital profiling of candidates. As controversial as it is, I know someone is saying, what are the legal and ethical implications of that? My employer is spying on me. What a, that is actually number two. Further research on the legal and ethical aspects of digital profiling is also an area I would recommend for further research. Social networking usage behavior as part of employee induction. As we do our employee induction, let's talk about social network user behavior. Corporate information has been sold through social networks. Intellectual property that belongs to organizations has been sold. Do you know the reason why the formula for Coca-Cola is not known? It's because it was never put into digital form. It's handwritten. Up to now, it was never typed. If it was a typed, I can tell you, it doesn't matter how many firewalls you put, how many intrusion detection, someone is going to get to it. Okay. So we are talking about further research on netiquette frameworks on social network. This is the appropriate user behavior on a social network. A new model to better understand social networking privacy issues and their antecedents. This is the recommendation uh, of this research. Now, I know this has not been very exhaustive, uh, but I was trying to be as fast in the interest of time at this particular moment. Uh, 